Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast here in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm your host as always, Stan McCune, realtor right here in the Greenville area. You can find all of my contact information in the show notes if you need to reach out to me for any of your real estate needs here in the Greenville area. Um, Or if you're a realtor, I'm going to add this, if you're a realtor listening, because I have had uh, an unbelievable number of realtors recently come up to me to say that um, that they're listening to the show. So thank you guys so much. I did, actually didn't know that I had realtors listening to to this content. Um, and that's actually really exciting for me. Um, I would really like to grow my team. I've got a small team right now and we're kind of moving into growth mode. So if you're needing a real estate team uh, to help you generate leads, to help you uh, get better training, whatnot, please contact me as well. Uh, info in the show notes. Uh, Piper Insurance Group, their information is also in the show notes. They are my go-to for home, auto, and umbrella insurance. And uh, they, you, they can help you in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. They're independent, so they can quote you from multiple different companies. I just did an, uh, an episode not too long ago about insurance. It's a problem. You want someone in your corner to be able to quote you on multiple different things. They can get you a free quote, um, including on investment properties as well, flips, ground up new construction, commercial. So please contact them for a free quote today. Their information is also in the show notes. Um, And if you enjoy this content, please like, rate, review, subscribe, all those good things. All right, we've got a handful of things to talk about today. Um, we finally got the market stats for the from the Greater Greenville Association of Realtors for both the months of August and September. We had delays due to Hurricane Helene, um, but uh, and then we also need to talk about mortgage rates, which have been going up. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to just talk about the election, right? Because we are I'm recording this one week before the big presidential election. It's truly a coin flip right now. I follow it very closely. I'm very intrigued by the election. Um, I always am. It's a big spectacle for me, and I, I just enjoy the circus around it, um, as uh, as it would, uh, as it might be. Um, so the elections are around the corner, and um, someone recently told me, um, a, a someone in real estate, that they they didn't tell me who they were voting for. They just told me that they were voting with their purse. So in other words, they were voting specifically uh, in such a way that they felt like uh, or we sh- should probably more accurately say they were voting with their bank account. That's not the word. They they said the word purse. But they were voting with their bank account, right? Concerned about one candidate might be worse for uh, their business and, and worse for uh, their income than the other. Now, I've talked about both of these candidates' uh, proposals when it comes to real estate. I'm concerned about both Trump and Harris when it comes to their real estate-related proposals. Um, right now, we've got particularly an interesting situation where the bond market and treasuries are doing weird things, and uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have time to come back to that a little bit later. Uh, but we've got a situation right now where um, a lot of economists are saying that basically both of these candidates are going to add to inflation and add to the debt. But in addition to that, we've got mortgage rates going up, as I've already alluded to, due to what's happening in the bond market. And um, long story short, whoever is president, whoever ends up getting into office is going to have a really challenging time if they really make the housing market a priority, because we need to see rates come down for the housing market to rebound in any meaningful way. But both candidates are making proposals that people think would increase inflation, which would then mean that rates wouldn't come down, right? Uh, because the Fed is not going to reduce the Fed funds rate. That influences all of the other rates and directly, including mortgage rates. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see who is voted in. I can't really tell you guys which one is going to be better or worse for housing. Um, I think Harris has more concrete plans for the housing market. And perhaps you could make an argument that one candidate versus the other is better for the economy as a whole, which would then help uh, downstream the real estate market. I don't know. I don't know. The, I'm. This is not my favorite election to vote in. Um, if you can't already tell, I'm kind of non-committal um, to both of these candidates. I did already vote, um, and I. I'll be honest. I voted third party because I did not feel confident in either of these candidates. Uh, no judgment towards people that vote for either other candidate. I'm not one of those. Um, obviously, you guys, if you've listened to the show for a while, you know that. Um, I'm not a big two-party guy. 
Um, I do like to vote third party. Um, and so, uh, so that's what's happened. But get out and vote. This is, a, this is an important election. Um, I don't think it's as important as some people think it is. It's not, uh, it's not uh, you know, I'm not of the impression that it's going to completely swing every single thing in this country. Um, but, uh, but it is important. So please get out and vote. There's a lot of early voting in South Carolina right now. And then, of course, next week is the final day to, to vote. Um, all right. Let's get into the Greater Greenville Association of Realtors market stats. And we're going to, we're not going to go through these uh, super duper detailed. I'm just going to go through these like I normally do. And we're going to start off with new listings data. New listings data. Now, I have traditionally told you guys when we go through this that this new listings data is inaccurate. Um, oftentimes for the most recent month. They've actually really cleaned that up recently. And uh, and this data actually is, uh, from what I can see, has been pretty accurate for the past few months. So, um, so here's what we've got. We have had the past entire year, we have had year-on-year increases in new listings. And August and September were no exception. August, new listings went up 10% year-on-year. September, 6.5% year-on-year. That September, 6.5% increase year-on-year uh, up from uh, up to 1,841 from 1,728 new listings September of last year. Uh, that 6.5% increase is the smallest increase since March of this year. So, um, there, perhaps we're entering a, a season here where new listings data is slowing down. Now, I need to tell you, there are two very, very important confounding things uh, in this data, okay? Right at the end of September, we had Hurricane Helene happen, okay? Helene directly impacted, I had a listing, I had a home that was going to list the end of September, that didn't. I had closings that were going to happen the end of September, they didn't. Um, and so, even though there was just a few days uh, left in the month of September when that hurricane hit, that did impact some of this data. Okay, so keep that in mind. We probably would have had higher new listings data. It probably would have been closer to 10% had that hurricane not happened. Uh, 10% increase year on year had the hurricane not happened. Additionally, as I've already alluded to, it is an election year. And that does, believe it or not, impact people's behaviors when it comes to real estate. People are concerned. They they think that, you know, housing market might crash or housing market might take off depending on who's president. Um, that I disagree with, generally speaking, that that one person versus the other could potentially cause a a crash or uh, or a boom. I don't think either of those things are likely to happen um, at the moment, uh, just based on one person being in office. But there's more than that, right? We also have the House. We have the Senate. Um, there are a lot of local races as well, governors and whatnot. So there's a lot that could happen. And I understand, to some extent, people holding off and being cautious um, but just understand that those two things do confound the data for this month and will confound the, the data for the month of October when that comes out, uh, which will probably be in a few weeks. And the month of November will also be impacted. So we're going to have some very, very messy data. Um, the messiest data that we've had probably since 2020, which was also a year with multiple confounding things that happened uh, in it. Uh, but long story short, we're having... Uh, more new listings coming online than we did last year. People are reaching that point where they're ready to sell, right? They're ready to move for one reason or another, uh, death, divorce, job change, things like that. Um, and uh, more people are ready to sell than are ready to buy right now. And a lot of people need to sell in order to buy. And so that's what we're seeing in the new listings data. Uh, pending sales, this is a number that's usually low by about 400 units uh, for the month before. Um, so we'll look back at August. August uh, of 2024, we had our first negative pending sales print in a while. So it was negative 2.5% year-on-year pending sales from August of 2023. So that's really bad, right? If you're a seller, uh, new listings is tracking a lot higher than it has in, pre in uh, the, the last year, but pending sales had a negative print. And guess what? The month of September, that's probably gonna be a negative as well because if we add 400 to the, to the number that it's currently at, which is 768, that gets us to 1168, which would be lower than the 1174, which was last year's pending sale uh, print for September. So uh, what we're seeing here is a demand pullback. And again, messy data because of, of Helene and whatnot. I don't know how all of that is going to catch up or if it's going to catch up. But the long story short is 
the housing market is slowing. There is no denying it is slowing. And with the mortgage rates having gone up as much as they have the past month, it's going to slow down some more. People need to be prepared for that. Um, I actually saw, just as an aside, I saw a very interesting uh, discussion on Twitter recently, which was there was a, a realtor, a team leader. I can't remember what state she was from. Uh, but she was talking about how she's telling her sellers, hey, don't lower your prices before the presidential election because a lot of people are just on the sidelines due to the presidential election. And people were commenting that's terrible advice because the longer you wait, the more you're getting into the slow season of real estate. And I thought that was a, a very interesting discussion. And that's something I think that's uh, it's going to be based on from one listing to the next. I don't think that you can put a blanket, you know, hey, um, Every single listing needs to hold off until after the election before doing price reductions or whatnot. But I also don't think you need to do the opposite, which is say, you know, well, hold on. Uh, we're about to enter the really, really slow season. We need to start dropping prices now. Um, every listing is going to be a little bit different. And I'm approaching it differently based on uh, based on the different listings that I have. Uh, one second. For some reason, I just realized my computer is not charging, which is a problem because I'm using it to record all this. Okay, there we go, sorry about that. Um, closed sales, so let's look at closed sales here for a second. Um, closed sales in, uh, in August were up 8.1% year on year, so that's big. That was actually, uh, we had a great August, uh, 1,548 closed sales, as opposed to the year prior, 1,432, but then September was a negative. September was minus 2.4. Now, again, had Helene not happened, um, you know, we do have a lot of end of month closings, right? So losing the final weekend and the final days of the month absolutely impacted closed sales for the month of September. So um, it was down 2.4%. It was at 1,297 closings versus 1,329 the year before. Um, I would say probably if Helene hadn't happened, uh, we would have needed, what, an extra... Uh, what, 32 closings to have a flat month? I am very, very sure that there would have been over 32 closings had we not lost that final weekend and the final few days um, of the month of September. So I'm going to take this as probably it's a negative number that wouldn't have been a negative if not for the hurricane. Some of those closed sales will get pushed into the month of October or did get pushed into the month of October. Um, so maybe we'll see some October numbers uh, look a little, a little bit different. I don't know because, again, um, a lot of closings are, are still being delayed. I actually have a closing that was supposed to happen weeks ago that because of Helene and some other things, we still haven't closed. Um, and so um, so that's going to get bumped into probably November. Um, we're hoping maybe we can close uh, the very beginning of November. Uh, but these are the sorts of things that are happening, and a lot of closings are going to get delayed uh, a lot of people that went under contract in September, you know, homes need to have debris removed. I've, I've mentioned I had a listing. Well, I had multiple listings that needed big trees removed. I had one that has a tree on the porch, that that's an insurance claim, a whole lot happening. Um, and so we're going to see some weird, weird things with closings. I would not be surprised if we see down downward numbers for closings for the rest of the year. That would not shock me at all. Days on market until sale. This is going to go, <laughs> this is probably going to go way up the, these next uh, few months, if I had to guess. So September was a big increase, biggest increase we've had since November of last year, 22.5% year on year, up to 49 days on market until sale. That's how long you can expect to go under contract from the time you list the home now, 49 days. Um, that doesn't take into, into consideration whether price reductions happen or anything like that, uh, but uh, I I think for sure, if I had to guess, we're going to push into the 50s because right now everyone is really on hold. And, and with Helene, you know, there's just a lot happening um, that's causing additional delays. So this is, we're, we're going to get, this number is going to get pushed up. Um, we're going to start to see uh, listings probably for the rest of the year are going to take some time uh, in order to sell. Median sales price. Uh, we had our first negative print in the median sales price since, uh, I believe it was March of 2023. So the median sales price went down year on year 3.4% from September of 2023. It was 319,900, it went down to 309,000 September of 2024. 
Um, it's not uncommon, uh, you know, if I, I could I could go through this data. I've done it before, but I could go through this data and show you that, you know, there's probably six or seven, like, random months in the data uh, over the years where there's been, you know, a, a, um, a month that had a year-on-year, -year, a random year-on-year -year decrease in the median sales price. And then things just kind of picked back up and we went back into positives. Um, and so... Like I said, we had this happen in March of 2023. There was only one negative print in all of 2023. That was that month. Um, and here we have September with a very random uh, negative 3.4% year on year on the median sales price. Uh, and so some people will look at that and say, well, prices, that means prices are going down. That means housing is getting cheaper. Well, um, again, I don't want to conclude much from one month. Uh, but three uh, minus 3.4% is substantial. I also don't want to ignore that. I don't want to pretend like that number doesn't exist because that's a big number, right? We have the largest increase we've had in 2024 to date was 4.2%. Um, and then the second largest was a 3.4% increase. So this compares to the second largest increase that we've had all year. Now, still the, 12, uh, the past 12 months, we still have a 2.4% increase in the median sales price, it's gone up from 300, uh, 307, 500 to 315 uh, for the for the past rolling 12 months. Um, but this most recent print negative and very negative, minus 3.4 percent. And I would not be shocked because mortgage rates were were had not gotten to the point now where they are now. Now they are, according to Mortgage News Daily, hovering around the low fours. Let me see if it's been updated for today yet. Oh, sorry, low fours. Low sevens. Um, yeah, it's at 7.08% now per Mortgage News Daily. It's gone up almost a percentage point in the past month. And when rates go up, demand goes down. And when demand goes down, prices can also go down. Um, and so... The October median sales price for 2023 was 324900 I would say there is a very, very good chance when the October numbers come out that it is lower than that. And we might be in a stretch here where we're going to see multiple months of negative median sales price prints. And we're going to have to grapple with, and I'm not sure yet how I'm going to do this, but we're going to have to grapple with how much of this is messy data. As I've already said, how much of this is we, we had a hurricane, messed up a bunch of stuff. Um, maybe even cause uh, you know some homes to sell for less than they should because of trees falling or whatever. Owners not not wanting to do those sorts of things. We're going to have to back out somehow. You know all the messiness with the elections because right in 2020 the elections didn't really impact the housing market in any meaningful way. People were just buying, buying, buying because rates were so low and because we had missed about you know four to six weeks of the uh, of prime real estate season that got spread out throughout the rest of the year. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see um, what happens here. I kind of sense that we're about to have multiple months of negative prints in the median sales price. Um, and and again, I'm not sure yet how, what sort of conclusions I'm going to draw from that yet. Um, I am leaning towards not drawing any major conclusions unless it continues into early next year after everyone knows who's president and we kind of see you know what the Federal Reserve decides and all of that. Um, but I really don't know. This is this is very interesting, very unprecedented uh, moment in Greenville real estate. Um, and if if prices start to go down, uh, if if this median price starts to go down consistently, say for the next four to five months, then I think we can for sure say that we are in a deflationary uh, uh, deflationary market where prices are actually meaningfully going down. Now, the, the problem then is, you know, obviously a lot of people love that, right? That's great if you're a buyer, um, as long as we don't go into a recession, right? We don't want that to happen. Sometimes the economy can follow the housing market. If the housing market starts to experience deflation, that could have ripple effects into the broader economy. I, I just don't know what to make of all of this. The other thing is, you know, um, Vice President Harris has proposed a big down uh, payment assistance option for first-time home buyers. I think Donald Trump very much is going to want to put his thumb on the scale of, of mortgage rates to try to get mortgage rates down one way or another. Um, so I don't know how all of these things are going to shape shake out with whoever is in the White House next. President Biden has kind of uh, not done a whole lot when it comes to the housing market, which is probably 
in my opinion, probably the best way to do it. I would prefer a president uh, kind of let the housing market do what the housing market is going to to do naturally, make it a truly fr free market. Um, but I have a hunch that the next president is going to want to have, uh, you know, put their thumb on the scale and, and have some kind of impact because uh, housing does uh, does impact people. It does impact the economy. It is something that people uh, like to feel like the president is doing something about. Even if oftentimes the president meddling is worse than not meddling. Uh, the average sales price, I don't focus on this very much because averages um, tend to be skewed by the by the high end and the low end. But uh, that being said, uh, the average also followed what the median was doing and had a negative print as well. Minus 1.6% year on year, down from 385 last year, September to uh, 379,000 of September of this year. Percent of list price received went down a little bit to 98.3%. Um, so if you list a home for 100000 you can reasonably expect it to sell for 98300 But that doesn't include uh, you know, any concessions, any closing costs, any uh, buyer agent compensation. None of that is included in that number. That's just a top line number. Um, and that is pretty in line with historical averages. But if we start to get below 98, then at that point, we would start to be getting into you know, numbers that would reflect what was happening back in, you know, 2015, 2016. Uh, so it has been coming down uh, a little bit. Uh, the past, what's, let's see here, the past six months, we've had negative year on year prints, but it's still staying up in the normal range. So sellers aren't, you know, uh, sellers can expect to get roughly what they were getting prior to the pandemic in terms of uh, the percentage of uh, list price received and how much it sells for, I should say, how much it sells for in comparison to what it's listed for. The one really positive thing on here, not to be, not surprisingly, is the housing affordability index. It crested 100 for the first time since February. That meant for in the month of September, the median household could purchase more than the median home, which is great. Uh, we like that number to stay as high as possible. Problem though, Mortgage rates have gone up a lot since then. This number is going to come down. I suspect in October it'll come down and go back into the 90s again. Inventory of homes for sale. This number is frequently off for the most recent month, um, but we can look at the past several months. It's been uh, going up year on year 35 to 40 percent, and I think the month of September will be about the same. Our inventory levels now are are really starting to be slightly higher than they were pre-pandemic. Um, and so uh, we're, we're seeing that shift. Again, it's, it's gradual, so we're not seeing anything dramatic just yet, but we're starting to see some tremors. Is there the possibility of a buyer's market? Yes. A buyer's market is more in the cards in this moment than it has been for a very long time. Now, we're not in it yet. Once we're in it, I will try to let you guys know, right? Because a, a lot of it's lagging data to determine whether we're in a buyer's market or not. We're not quite in a buyer's market just yet. But if rates continue to stay where they are, that would not surprise me um, if if we find ourselves in a buyer's market in 2025. And I'll get to the rates in just a second. Um, last uh, but not least on here, month's supply of inventory. Um, it, it says we're at 3.9, but that number is going to get revised. It's probably going to get revised down to like 3.5 months of inventory. Um, that's still going to be a big increase from September which was uh, of 2023, which was 2.8 months of inventory. So we've now been above three months of inventory and steadily increasing throughout the year since April. Um, and uh, traditionally, people say, you know, once you get to six months of inventory, that's kind of the tipping point between a buyer's market and a seller's market. Um, that's a lagging indicator, though. I'm not going to get into the details of, of why I believe this is true. But I believe right now, the way the current dynamics are, if we got to somewhere between four and four and a half months of inventory, that's the point at which we would flip over into a buyer's market. Maybe at some point I'll get a little bit more into the weeds on why I believe that that has shifted. Um, but just just know, if we got to four and a half months of inventory, for sure by that point, it would feel like a buyer's market to a lot of people. Um, okay, let's talk about mortgage rates real quick. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get too, uh, too in the weeds here, but it's worth discussing the fact that mortgage rates have been going up steadily Despite the fact that the uh, the Federal Reserve not too long ago reduced uh, the Fed funds rate, and we had a whole podcast about this and everything, um, and um, you know at the time 
a lot of people thought, okay, this is going to have the long-term effect of mortgage rates going down. Well, that is not at all what happened. And the reason why that hasn't happened is because the basically people have changed their behavior in terms of the bond market, which then impacts mortgage rates indirectly. So we've talked about this before. The 10-year treasury is pegged basically to the 30-year fixed rate mortgage, right? If the 10-year treasury goes up, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage goes up, right? If it goes down, 30-year fixed rate mortgage goes down. If it goes up or down, depends on whether people are, are buying bonds, treasuries, things of that nature from the government. If they aren't buying, then the number goes up, right? So that it's more attractive for people to buy. If they do buy, then the number goes down. Simple supply and demand, right? When The reason why gas prices go up is because uh, there's more gas than there are buyers. If the price of gas goes down, uh, so, sorry, uh, I, I I got that reversed. I'm, I'm trying to talk faster than my brain is working. If more people are buying gas than gas is being produced, then the price of gas goes up. If uh, more gas is being produced than buyers are coming into the market to buy the gas, then the price comes down. Uh, similar thing with what's happening in treasuries. If people decide, you know what, we don't want to buy uh, 10-year treasury bills and, and, and things of that nature, uh, then those are the, the yield that you get on the treasuries is going to go up to make it more attractive for people to buy them and to you know supply the government with more money. Um, now, I can't, if you're completely confused, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the best I could do. Find another podcast that gets uh, into more detail. I don't have time to, to get into all of the detail when it comes to that. But the question needs to be asked here, and here's where I'm going with this, is that why is this happening? Why are traders and and uh, brokers, stock brokers, changing their behaviors in terms of what they're doing? And why are we seeing uh, the 10-year yield doing these strange things? You know, it, it bottomed out here in mid, uh, mid-September. It was at it got all the way down to 3.61, and now it's at 4.286. And naturally speaking, nat- naturally, uh, as a result of this, the mortgage mortgage rates have done the same thing. We saw mortgage rates get down to uh, six point. I think 6.14 was the lowest on Mortgage News Daily, and now it's up to 7.08, almost a 1% swing in just a month. Um, so this is... Really, really wild. So what's happening here? Well, a few things are happening. First off, there's market jitters about the election. I think particularly about Trump and potential the uh, the Republican Party doing like a full sweep, right? Getting the White House getting the and getting the full legislature, the House and the Senate. Um, I think that there's concerns if we don't have a divided government that what we're going to have is uh, a, an intense inflationary period. And that's very possible. Usually when you get undivided government, right, you have one party controlling the White House and the legislature. Usually what that means is they start spending all sorts of money on things that then causes things to get out of whack um, in terms of inflation. And if inflation goes up, then guess what? The Federal Reserve is not going to uh, to reduce their rates. And as such, that's going to cause these rates to be elevated. So the 10-year treasury, here's what's happening, is traders are not looking at what's happening right now. They're trying to project what's going to happen in the future. And what and basically what they are saying is two things with them uh, not being as involved, in, uh, as involved with bond purchases as they have been. They're saying, A, they anticipate more inflation in the future, and B, they have seen a lot of strong jobs data recently, and they're saying, okay, uh, that means that we are most likely not going into an inflation, uh, or not, guys, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm about to lose my mind here. We're not going into a recession, um, is is one conclusion, and perhaps they're right, perhaps they're wrong. Again, they're, they're guessing, but they're looking at the strong economic data, strong jobs data that's come out the past few weeks, and they're concluding, we're most likely not going to go into a recession. So rather than dumping their money into something safe, like the 10-year treasury, they're dumping their money into more risky assets, assuming that the economy is going to be uh, is is going to be strong in the next year or so. So that's part of what's happening. And then also, 
uh, the the consideration for the possibility that inflation uh, may end up being higher, and as a result, the uh, federal funds rate is going to stay elevated as well. There's a, other things involved with this, but I think that at the very least, those are the things that I think are going on, and I've heard several other experts say that that's why they think that even though the Federal Reserve reduced the Fed funds rate, we are still seeing mortgages uh, go up at a very, very quick rate. Now, um, I'm, I'm not sure if we'll see them go up into the mid sevens, but as long as they're over sevens, that's bad, bad news for the housing market. Okay, so um, so we'll see. I, I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if after the election we see this kind of come back down as people kind of um, come to their senses, especially if we have a situation where it's divided government, right? Where we have, uh, you know, someone that wins in the White House, but there's not a sweep of also the legislature. Um, that would probably be the best case scenario for uh, for mortgage rates is that divided government scenario. But uh, we'll have to see. Perhaps by the time you're listening to this, uh, some of you, if you don't listen to it the week that it comes out, you might already know who's won the election. I don't know. Right now, it's a complete coin flip. Like I said, I track it very closely, and I have no idea whatsoever who is going to win. It can really go in either direction. If I had to put money on it, which I'm certainly not going to do, I'd probably bet on Trump at this point. Uh, but a lot can happen in a week, and I'm recording this on uh, Tuesday, October 29th, so that's exactly what we have. We have a week. Um, so we'll see. A lot can happen. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen, um, but I will keep you guys apprised of how it impacts real estate one way or the other. So thanks for listening. My contact information is in the show notes. Piper Insurance Group also in the show notes. Like, rate, review, subscribe, all of those good things, and we will talk again next time.